So if I'm sitting at this dinner talking to friends and I'm five years into a relationship and we still have a great sex life, oh, then everyone's going to think that I'm lying. Oh, uh, yeah. Or you're <laughs> a nymphomaniac or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they, it, it comes back to the same thing. And yeah. both when it comes to sex and money, that's areas where since we have so much conditioning and there's still so much going on, like when it comes to cultural and societal beliefs, we tend to not live abundance, but instead live live in lack. Mm. Welcome, everybody. This is Mind the Shift, and I am Anders Bolling. Today, we're going to connect topics that I think most people would not connect. Money, sex, business, and spirituality. But to me, I must say that this sounds like uh, a dream combine. <laughs> I'm happy to introduce you to Ida Herbertsson. Welcome to the show, Ida. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. My pleasure. Now, you do a lot of things, but what made me curious was your mindset coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, a friend of mine who who took one of your courses um, tipped me about you, so that's how I <laughs> got to know about you. I love that. Yeah. And you coach people to have a, a sounder, to have sounder relationships with money and, and with sex. Uh, mm -hmm. Or, I mean, how, how would you describe what it is that you're doing right now? Oh, yeah, that's a difficult one to describe what I'm doing. Uh, no, but I, f first of all, I, I have a daytime job and then I also do do coaching on the side. Uh, and it, we will mostly be talking about my coaching uh, here today, yeah. I, I think. Um, we'll be talking about but, all kinds of things, but that's, I mean, that's the main focus. <laughs> that's the main focus. Uh, so so my daytime job, I work, I work with the startup investments, but my coaching, I... I'm combining our relationship with money and sex and sexuality uh, and how by changing that relationship and changing their relationship to ourselves, basically, we can also transform our life. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, and you're also a yoga instructor? Yeah. I get it. So back in, uh, so, so my... My journey uh, started, I would say, like my, my journey to where, where I am today. It's, of course, been been happening the whole life uh, or my whole life. But there was a big shift back in 2018. Uh, I broke up with my boyfriend. I switched jobs. I, the project that I was hired for uh, in that new job was terminated. And then I was just like, OK, so what now? Let's just take some time off and really figure out what I want to do. So among other things, I did a yoga teacher training. I have a background in the fitness industry and been uh, a group fitness uh, coach since 2009. Um, so so yoga was, was like good continuation of that. And my naturopath uh, has said to me, you can't be a yoga teacher because you're so inflexible. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, yoga is not at all about the like moving my body or or the. I mean, there's strength and there's flexibility, and those components are important. But for me, those are the tools into the mind through yoga. And I think when I did my yoga teacher training back in 2019, uh, no, 2018, 2019, 18. 1819. Yeah, the January 2019. Uh in Bali, um that was a lot happening in how I was connecting to my body and I think that's one of the most important things for me with yoga that it's so much about the body and the mind and how we put them together and what we can actually achieve by switching our mindset. Yeah. So that was that was one big piece in my journey moving mm. forward. Definitely. Yeah, 
I, I want to come back, get back to that that journey, that uh, epiphany you had, or or the transformation, or whatever <laughs> you want to call it, uh, in a little while. But let's talk a little bit more about your your coaching here and the the money and sex connection thing. Yeah, I think most people wouldn't wouldn't connect money and sex. I I, I guess that most people would say that you're either successful in your love life or you're successful in making money. Yeah. What do you have to say about that? <laughs> that dichotomy? I would say uh, for me, it's the opposite. Uh, but that's also because I have through a lot of coaching myself uh, and like going, being coaching programs and so on, have learned how deeply they are connected. I'm not saying that's the case for everyone. Uh, but it's interesting if you look at both sex and sexuality and money, those are two topics that all of us, I want to say, at least everyone in the Western world, and I would say everyone, has a lot of conditioning around. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of taboo even talking about it. I would say that we might be getting better and better and a lot is happening, so we dare to talk about it more. But the thing is, the more, when we have a lot of conditioning we also have a lot of fears and limiting beliefs stopping us. And by changing those limiting beliefs, by connecting to ourselves, connecting to our body, connecting to our sexuality, which I today, I have not always done that, but today sex and sexuality is so much about the life force. And by having a great connection, I can also... I kind of want to say create more money, uh, but it's not always about creating more money, mm -hmm. but it's about having a different relationship to the money that I have, as well as to the money that we may not have mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, what is it with our relationship with money? It's, I mean, it's like we're living in, uh, we're conditioned to, to, to believe that, that there is lack of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we have this lack mentality, yeah. lack mindset. But yeah. Is it that we, we, we are taught that life life is a struggle, but you say that it isn't? And <laughs> yeah. we, we need to, to realize that that is much better than, than the that Yeah, and... that's that's such a good way to summarize it because we are taught that life's supposed to be a struggle. We're supposed to feel lack of everything. We're supposed to be complaining. And a lot of times complaining and really feeling into that we are lacking money or other types of resources also creates a safety for us. And that's harsh and it's difficult to hear and it might be triggering to a lot of people hearing that. Uh, and I know, I mean, we live in Sweden. It's a very privileged country, uh, although a lot is happening now politically that <laughs> That's another. <laughs> yeah, but that's on a superficial level, yeah, you know? Yeah, that's a superficial <laughs> level. So so we can still do a lot ourselves. And now I kind of got out of what I was going to say. <laughs> you lost a train of thought there. Well, we're talking about the lack mentality. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, so so by, I mean, imagine sitting at, I, I think a lot of people, at least I know a lot of, female friends of mine, if we're sitting at a dinner together, uh, only us female friends, there's almost like you feel this connection with each other. If you are complaining on your boss, you're complaining with your sex life, or you're complaining on your boyfriend, mm. or the money that you don't have, or there's all a, there's these There's a things. comfort in that almost. Yeah, there, there's a comfort. And by admitting that we have this comfort, we are actually taking one more step to accepting, okay, I do feel comfortable being in lack. But on a logical level, I do not want to live in lack. Mm. But on a subconscious or unconscious level, I obviously feel comfortable and obviously like being in mm. lack. Mm. It's almost uh, like the the condition that some people have. You might have experienced this or, or come across this. People who are sick or ill, yeah, they have some kind of um, ailment that is, um, you know, chronic mm -hmm. for some reason, either psychosomatic or or a true somatic illness. It doesn't matter really. 
it's like they some 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 people seem to kind of get stuck in that and, yeah. and, and they identify with that almost. Mm. Yeah, totally. And and I think that's that's so common that we start to identify with it. So it's we don't even notice that we are doing it and we don't even notice that we can affect it. Because yeah. there are so many things that we can affect. We can't we can't affect everything that's going on in our life, but it's our own responsibility to take care of ourselves. And the sooner we realize that and the sooner we realize that we can do so many things by ourselves the sooner we can start making those changes happen and it's also important to remember that it's like you're not going to wake up one day and say like oh i'm completely free of all conditioning and everything and i'm just super happy all the time no because it's a constant journey that's going to be continuing for your whole life mm -hmm. and that's <sighs> Like, that's why we need to take your courses. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but I mean, that's that's part of it. And just because I work with coaching people doesn't mean that I have everything uh, put together all the time. Uh, I still have a lot of conditioning to work through. Uh, I still have things and limiting beliefs that are stopping me from pursuing and doing things. And I, I still catch myself being comfortable in the lack mindset or or in some other type of mindset that is stopping me somehow. Mm. Is this the exact same kind of flawed mindset that keeps people from having a, a healthy sex life? Oh yeah, definitely. So that's it's, why the, the way you combine yeah, the, that's, the money that's, mindset that's and the sex all, mindset. That's all so, so much connected. And for me, it's also been very much about coming back to our bodies and, and understanding that our bodies and our minds, they work together which was, as you were talking about, also illnesses that sometimes we feel like we have worked through it, but then there might be something stuck in our bodies. I was at a yoga class this morning with my favorite uh, yoga teacher, which I loved by coming to Stockholm, but I felt so much resistance in my hips. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, I have something going on. Something is happening in my hips that I need to take care of. And that might take two weeks or it might take two years to work through whatever is stuck there. And by connecting to our bodies, we can also connect to our sexuality because we are sexual beings. So what do you say about my arthrosis in my <laughs> right hip? <laughs> How can I uh, connect that to my sexuality? Oh, <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> well, for me, it's very much about connecting to all our senses yeah. and to see, okay, what is happening and what is how am I, where am I not loving myself? Or what do I need to let go of? And, and also be kind to ourselves, which is most of the time easier said than done. Mm. Yeah, well, love yourself. Otherwise you can't love others. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a basic, basic, yeah. basic truth. Um, so uh, yeah, this lack mentality, you said, I think uh, in, before this interview in, in pre-interview form that I that I send out to, to my guests, you said that we live from fear. Yeah. Uh, and, and your your greatest scare is that we live from fear, which is a bit paradoxical because that <laughs> means that you're all you also live in fear. You yeah. Live from fear. Yeah. But uh that I mean you, you basically you're you're saying that that's something we, we do and we don't realize it perhaps. Yeah. And th that's but something we that we do very much as a collective. Yeah. And that's as I see it, and, and th that's why the world is as it is at the moment. Mm. We are so scared of others or other cultures, or we're so scared of who we are ourselves. So we are not really kind and put that through. So instead, we put the blame on someone else. Mm. And then through that, like when... When this collective fear is just like growing bigger and bigger in the end, that is also what I feel is coming to the result of wars. Yeah. I guess it's the illusion of separation. Yeah. That, that we're not one, we're, we're separated. Yeah, exactly. And it comes down to what you mentioned before, this politics thing. We yeah. had an election, elections in Sweden recently and change of government and all that. And people get scared because the wrong party is in charge and all that. But yeah. I mean, it's just... Uh, 
it's I guess it's the same thing. I mean, why why fear? I mean, <laughs> yeah, and and it's it's this is so interesting I, because I do believe that, uh, and and this might not be the the space for political views, but everyone following me on Instagram knows pretty well what I did not vote for, at least. Um, and I feel like a lot of people in Sweden, and Sweden is generally a safe country. Like if you look in the world in general, we're, we're a safe country. And people are so scared of what we don't know. And people are so scared and so unhappy because we fear someone else or we blame someone else. Mm. So then we vote for someone else to take away our fears instead of working yeah, with ourselves. Exactly, yeah. Put, put the, the, the problem is outside of yeah, ourselves. Yeah, we always put the problem outside ourselves. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like some of us countries, we would honestly need a war to realize how good it actually is in our country today. Mm -hmm. And I'm not at all <laughs> wishing for a war to happen in Sweden. Definitely not, don't get me wrong, but we are never grateful for what we have. Mm -hmm. Most people are so unhappy. And I think we see that in the Western world in general. There is a lot of unhappiness. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of things politically correct and so on, but people continue to be unhappy. And we continue to put it on someone else to make us happy instead of coming back to ourselves and see what we can do. Yes, of course, it's important that we have structures in place and so on and so on. But no matter if we have that or not, we are still responsible for our own happiness. Mm. And that doesn't mean that we are, we are not allowed to feel sad or angry or grief or anything, the opposite. Uh, most people who know me always like, oh, you're so energetic and you're so happy and, and so on. I break down a lot. I am very connected to my emotions of sadness and I cry and I allow those things to be felt. And that's also something that I talk a lot about with my clients, mm. allowing everything to be felt. Mm and accepting all parts of ourselves. Mm. And maybe the difference between you and others is that you're, you're not scared of being sad or no. being angry or you just let it happen. I'm a little bit more scared of being angry than being sad, which yeah. is something that has been coming up lately for yeah. me. So so like yeah. as talking about, there's always work that we can do, mm. uh, but yeah. But you don't feel like a victim. No. That's the conundrum of yeah. you know victimhood that, that's so widespread. Exactly. Also part of that, thing that we, we blame, we blame the someone. outer world yeah. for our own problems yeah. and that thus we are victims yeah. and that's so bad. Yeah, it, it always comes down to blaming someone else and, and when it comes to both money and sex, then we definitely don't want mm -hmm. to take any responsibility because it's, uh, it's our boss's fault that we don't make more money at the job and it's our partner's fault that our sex life is shit. and. Mm -hmm and so on and so on and everyone has a responsibility themselves i'm not saying that it's always easy to take that responsibility and when it comes to like sex love and relationship that i'm working more and more with yes there are also different forms of abuse and so on and that's not what i'm talking about you're not supposed to take the responsibility of staying in an abusive relationship please go go ahead and take help there is help to be found but i'm talking about all these things that we do on a daily basis where we blame someone else yeah so wise i couldn't agree more <laughs> so um cynical people might say that you know love life the love life is transactional just as the economical economic yeah. life is transactional uh, is there some truth to that to that or is it just cynical what would you say no i think that's that's a pretty interesting thing and i'm i'm also not saying that it's like doesn't need to be wrong every in in some some way everything we do is transactional mm -hmm. both when it comes to money or sex but in the end it's for me very much about coming back to ourselves and how do i want to live my life what type of transactions do i want to 
want to engage in. Do you mostly coach people who have uh, problems with their, to have, you know, uh, who have a neurotic relationship with money or people who have the same problem with sex or both? I would say, I've, um, so, so sex love and relationship is fairly new to what I've been coaching. I've been like having that as a component in, in a lot of the money coaching that I've been doing, yeah. but not that much of focus. So I've definitely been focusing more on, and people uh, uh, coaching people around money, and that might also be because I have, like, I have a background, and I do today also work with investments and so on. So that comes more naturally. And for me, it was like when I was a kid, I was this super spender. I spent my like monthly allowance more or less before I had it. Uh, and then <laughs> when I was in my previous relationship, we were just saving for the future. That's and we stopped living today. So like I've had I've been going through like periods of spending too much and saving too much because, yes, there is such a thing as saving too much as well. And through that journey, I realized that, okay, it's it's never really about the actual money, but it's about how I relate to that money. And I work uh, with women. Uh, I'm open to working with men as well, but I've only worked with women so far. And because I think that we tend to have many times zero self-confidence when it comes to money. Uh, It's less talked about when we are growing up, uh, which also has its natural reasons. I I mean, Mm, if you go back, historic. so, so it's, it's no wonder, but there's always also so much to do. And it's it's both about finding the confidence and, and really feeling safe in handling money at all. And I mean, some people might feel like they are spending too much. My first question and in yeah, those I, I cases know, how, how you coach how, yeah, so, what do you so, tell so, people so, so like in, 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 in that case like if, if someone comes to me I'm just spending too much I, I have like I have zero money left two days before my next salary okay so what, what, what it's a lot of times about is that they don't feel safe having money mm. they find this safety of not having money left by the mm. end of the month is this and, lack mentality that we were talking yeah, about before? Yeah, it, it's definitely lack mentality. And it can also be, they have gotten so used to not having any money by the end of the month. Yeah. So they know, you know that you will survive having zero money by the end of the month. You don't know that you will survive if you have uh, 200 crowns left. So then you make sure, or the universe makes sure, you know, depending on how you want to see it, that you don't have any money left by the end of the month. Because... It also it always or almost always comes back to survival, hmm. and you might have been raised uh, with a family, and by the end of the month there was always a lack of money. Uh, there was zero money left by the end of the month, and it somehow always worked out. So you have learned that it always works out if I don't have any money left. You don't know unconsciously that it will actually work out if you do have money left. So then you make sure to spend it. So there comes down to, okay, how can we work with making you feel safe in your body and in your mind to actually have money by the end of the month? And usually it's good to start with small amounts of money. Um... And just like working with your whole body and feeling into having that money Mm. with you. And not feeling bad about being abundant, being rich. Exactly. Because that's such a common thing as well. We are, we tend to be more afraid of being rich than being poor. Well, in this country, at least. I don't know. Especially in this country. <laughs> the United States might be a different story. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be a different story. But but, but it's 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 kind of the same as the not having any money by the end of the month. We know we will survive uh, with that amount of money that we are having. Uh, and maybe uh, 
X amount and in savings and so on. We know that's good. We know that we, we feel safe having this specific salary, but we don't feel safe having more money than that because we can't even imagine it. And also, how are my friends going to treat me when I'm suddenly a millionaire? How um, how are other people going to react? Or am I going to change? Because I have been taught my whole life that rich people are greedy mm -hmm. and everyone who's rich has become that by doing something mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of what society teaches us. If you look at most of the, of the movies that are around money or involves big amounts of money, it's, it's many, many times bad people who mm -hmm. have a lot of money. Not mm -hmm. all the time, but that's the narrative that we keep telling ourselves so if the narrative in our head is that rich people are greedy and to get a lot of money i need to do something bad if that's what's unconsciously present with us we will never get rich because that will require us to be greedy or to do something bad and we don't want to do that so instead we stay poor and, and i guess that's the same with with your sex life then if yeah. people have lousy sex lives yeah. it's like they they don't deserve to have mm, a, yeah an abundant sex life and it's uh maybe it's the same thing there that yeah. people who have this abundant sex life they, they have they have it because of some bad reason yeah some, you know exactly yeah totally and and i think it's so common and one thing that i've been working through a lot since my last relationship and which also have like made me come into more in with sex and sexuality is that everyone is teaching you that after a few years in a relationship your sex life is gonna more or less disappear mm -hmm. so that's just what everyone's expecting. saying so that's what everyone's mm -hmm. expecting so then it's all then i'm just like everyone else and everything is fine yeah I'm and no, i'm normal yeah exactly i'm normal so i fit in so i will survive so we we and and so if I'm sitting at this dinner talking to friends and I'm five years into a relationship and we still have a great sex life, oh, then everyone's going to think that I'm lying. Oh, uh, yeah. Or you're <laughs> a nymphomaniac or something. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So they, it, it comes back to the same thing. And yeah. both when it comes to sex and money, that's areas where since we have so much conditioning and there's still so much going on, like when it comes to cultural and societal beliefs, we tend to not live abundant, but instead live live in lack. Mm. And for me also, another part of connecting to our sexuality is connecting to that life force, connecting to the creativity, uh, which has played a huge part in my life since I started to work with my sexuality and accept that and and enjoy that mm. on a whole different level it's so interesting that you combine these two <laughs> kinds of uh, parts of life you know they're so central yeah Money, they are and, they are and, and sexuality and uh, you, the more you think about it the more it makes sense actually it does it yeah. does and for anyone listen who feels like oh this is so triggering this is so hard good yeah. Because then you are starting to touch upon something that you can start working with. Yeah. It, many, you know, spiritual teachers, spiritual pointers, whatever you want to call them, they 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 say that um, if you focus on what you desire as if you already have yes. it, instead of focusing on what you not have, yeah. what you don't have, I mean, uh, but you want, then money will not be a problem. Is it like that? I think that's a little bit of a simplification. Yeah. Uh, because... Yes, I, I I do that myself. Like I work a lot like with- Like an affirmation like, or a... Just like I, I journal a lot and write down like as, as it's already happening, as it's already my truth today. So now that I'm sitting in my couch, blah, blah, and then I'm writing as if I'm my next level me. Uh, and yes, but there's also a difference between writing or affirming that or, or and actually being aware of what is it that it's keeping me from having it because you can mm. affirm that over and over and over again and if you don't fully believe it it's not going to happen it's not gonna work then out. you don't think it's working no. and then you think it's just bullshit and a really good tool to use uh if, if you don't have 
a coach, which is definitely what I would recommend the most because usually we need someone else to help us. And you might find a good friend. You can coach each other because coaching is a lot about asking questions and listening. And But a really good thing to do when you're affirming this, I have a million dollars, and then really like feeling into the vision of you having it, it being present, it happening, and then feel into your body and just check in, okay, is my body really connected to this truth? Mm -hmm. Or is there something stopping me? Oh, there's some contraction in my stomach, or there's something maybe in my hips, as I was talking about previously, or this is it's this heaviness in my shoulders that is stopping me because maybe I don't really believe it to be possible for me to yeah. have this truth because X, Y, Z. Mm. Well, your mind plays you tricks all the yeah, time. Yeah, it does. But there is something to this uh, thing that you you, you kind of uh, you kind of believe that it's it's already happened. It's difficult. I mean, I've I've tried to do this myself, but. This, once in a while, I, I succeed, uh, more or less, I think. So it's like, you just kind of feel, you, you feel it. You feel yeah. that you have this and you you, you smile when you walk on mm. the street because yeah. you know that oh, this is so good. It's so good to be yeah. in this place, you know. And then you get, you're almost surprised when you realize that, oh, it's it's not here already. And so, yeah. 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 But that that's such a good practice yeah. to do. Yeah. Uh, and really allowing your whole body to feel into this future mm. of having whatever it is that we want to have and also trust that it might not come as you expect it to come exactly the universe yeah it works in in a it does way it does uh so you might for example um you might want x amount in your in, in salary for example to talk about money so so i want i want that x amount and then it might come in a different way. You might meet a partner who is making more. So combined, you do. So so it has its own ways of solving whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, that's why I sometimes have problems with this, this specification, you know, when yeah. you're talking about million dollars, yeah. this and thousand dollars there. That uh, So it's more like, I mean, to me, it's more like I'm, I'm abundant. I have what I need. Yeah. It's more like that, you know. And then in some ways, it will work out or exactly yeah do you agree <laughs> I, I totally agree okay. uh okay. it will work out and many times it doesn't work out as we might expect it and it might sometimes it can work overnight but most of the times i would say it doesn't work overnight and sometimes it might take longer and you will find some learnings along the way and many of us looking back at, at our life and what we have experienced we can pinpoint a few things that we maybe didn't expect happening but how important they might have been mm. to getting to where we are now. Mm. So, w what do you think is at play here? Uh, how does it work? I mean, do you? I mean, you you talk about the universe and things like that. Yeah. If you, I don't know if you want to go down that rabbit hole now, but <laughs> but how does it work? Is it is it? Do you, do you believe that there is some kind of um, general force uh, around us yes. out there that con yeah. connects us and is in play? Yeah, I totally believe that and. I can't explain it. I can just feel it. And it feels like I've experienced it sometimes during meditation and so on. And for me, it's also like, okay, so what if there actually isn't anything? Well, the worst things that have been happening from me believing that there is something greater than ourselves mm -hmm. is that it makes me feel good. So, I mean, I have a lot yeah. of people around me who doesn't believe in anything else and think it's just mambo jambo. And that's okay. I mean, if that's their truth and that's what they want to believe, I'm all good. Mm. But for me, it's this, I, I just love this feeling of that there is a greater force and that we are somehow put here to experience something specific and to learn and to grow uh, with our souls or whatever you want to call it. And honestly, if it's just going to be all black when I die, well, then I lived a pretty happy life believing yeah. that there was something bigger. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah.
Yeah. I, have, you, have you always felt like that since you were a child? Yeah. I, I feel like I've always yeah, just, yeah. felt like that, but I haven't maybe always been able to describe it. Mm. I, I, I wouldn't say that I can describe it today either because it's it's a lot about just a feeling for mm. me. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've always felt like there is something, something more like, like the mystical has <clears throat> always intrigued me. And I mean, for when I was a kid, I loved to uh, go to church with my grandma. Uh, I I wouldn't say that I I'm part of any specific religion today, um, but but I for me that's also like just shows that I I have this belief of of, of there that there is something bigger, mm. and also many times more than just making me feel happy and safe it also makes it easier to go through the hardships mm. that's happening although it's important also when we go through those hardships to not like skip over whatever learnings and just like not be in those feelings and emotions that might arise but allowing us to still be with those feelings but having that sense of something greater mm, mm. Uh, has always helped me a lot. So tell us about this uh, transformation that you had yeah. years ago, <laughs> more deeply. You know, mentioned that you yeah. went to a yoga retreat in uh, Bali. And, yeah. uh, but was, was that, and you also, I think you wrote somewhere or you said in some video or something that this was, this was your <laughs> Saturn return yeah. period or time point in time, which I find very, very <laughs> That being said, I also yeah. don't know at I, I, all I'm much a bit, about. I'm a bit into at, astrology myself. Yeah. I think it's very, it was very fascinating that you yeah. said that uh, because I, I I experienced that myself yeah. at that point, and then I've had my second <laughs> just now. So yeah. anyway, uh, so t tell us about that yeah. transformation. Was it three, four, five yeah, years ago? Yeah. So or so back in 2018, it was the spring in 2018. I quit my job as a consultant. I started a new job with a niche bank in this new exciting project um a few months into that job i broke up with my boyfriend since five years uh we sold our apartment so and then skip another few months ahead the project that i was hired for got canceled so i was let go of uh it wasn't at all dramatic like i expected it to happen um a few weeks or even months before it happened and then I moved out. So so within a week, I got fired. Me and my boyfriend moved out of our apartment and I moved into a new apartment. And then I was like, okay, so what now? What now? No. Uh, and as I was saying before, we did save a lot of money because that was, was what we were really good at. So, when, you, when you were oversaving or? Oversaving, yeah. yeah. So, so getting out of our relationship, having been oversaving, I was like, okay, good. Now I can live on my savings for a while, uh, which I was so happy that I could do. And then I was like, now I'm going to figure out whatever is next because I could go back to consulting. I was welcome back, but I was just like, mm, not really there yet. So then January 2019, I did my yoga teacher training during that spring and in Bali and also traveled in Bali for a while. Uh, loved it beautiful place i love asia in general i've always felt like at home there um then i then i did a personal training certification and was like maybe i should continue to uh, work more in the fitness industry mm. i didn't work full time but i was teaching a lot of class and i was like no this this is my heart is not fully there I started to kind of long back to having more of an intellectual challenge when it comes to, I've always loved math. Uh, I love Excel. So then I was like, I want a job within that, but I want it to be part-time. And then a few months later, it showed up. <laughs> so that that's one of those moments when yeah. I was like, I definitely manifested this to happen. Um, cool. And then I started working with investments and... This summer of 2019, I also came in contact with a coach named Sandra, which completely changed my life. Sandra I did her. Denise. Yeah, Sandra Denise. Uh, she's amazing. I um, I did her program, The Art of Living Eternal Life, and I would recommend 
every woman in the whole world to do her program mm. uh, because what she taught me and like what her energy uh, and her presence taught me was just like there's so much more to life there's so much pleasure in every moment if we choose to see it mm. so that was so much for me to come back to my body and I also through her program started healing my own relationship with both money but especially sex and sexuality and through that I was just like okay so I do know a lot of a lot about investments and now I've also started to realize there's something more when it comes to money and the relationship so through that I also started to coach myself and, and started building that business yeah uh, great yeah so did you feel that you really transformed your life completely yeah, yeah, during that yeah, period? Yeah, totally. And, and, and I would, would you say that you had a, an epiphany or I mean, would you go that far? Yeah, but <laughs> but but not from like, it wasn't an overnight thing. No. Um, it, 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 it was gradual. But looking back at me before that program compared to after that program, that's two different versions of me. Mm -hmm. And, and no one could probably see it on the outside, but it was... Maybe your friends noticed yeah, it? Yeah, they, they probably... The Ida before and the Ida yeah, after. Yeah, they probably did, but it was it was such a big shift inside of me. Hmm. Uh, and I also feel like I want to pay that forward because there's so much more pleasure in life. There's so much more that we can experience and that we can do. And... Life is not meant to be a struggle, or maybe it is. Maybe someone wants to believe that it's meant to be a struggle. I don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. I rather want to believe that it's meant to be pleasurable and amazing and fun and ecstatic. Mm. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it makes it much fun, much more fun. I think we've been conditioned to believing that life is a struggle since yeah. you know thousands of years back. Totally. We've been living in this matrix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, that's that's another podcast episode perhaps but <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, topic now you, you have something on your website called your weekly question yeah and it's not only about sex and money it's about money sex business and spirituality so those yeah. four and so is there a in, in what order do those things come to you now today if there is an order oh. maybe there isn't one no i would say there is no order okay. they are they are just like a mix hmm. that more or less everything I do has those bits and pieces, but I don't think like my colleagues at my day job, they don't know that much about what, what that I coach or some of them do know that I coach about mm. sex and spirituality. And you may not notice that those things are present in my day job, but all those four things are kind of always present in my life Two different degrees so no I, I wouldn't say that one thing comes maybe first. when they start looking funny at you at, at, at your work then you, you know that <laughs> then they, i know yeah <laughs> checking out your website uh okay. totally great so to let's talk a little bit about sex and money in society uh in general to what yeah. extent have you been able to explore the the gender differences in sexuality i mean mm. you've been telling us here that you you coach you have female clients yeah Almost, uh, yeah, I mean, only, I mean, yeah, entirely, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's such a good question, and I think this is also gender has also become very political. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, I feel very safe uh, as uh, saying that I'm a woman, I'm a female, mm, I I have a pussy, and it's just like this is who I am, and. I also, I, I've, there's so much, no matter, like, like a lot of what's my view on what's happening when it comes to gender is, this is of course an important discussion, but I feel like we are always coming back to putting everyone into boxes, mm -hmm. no matter how we do it. And I don't think that that's going to make people not, not happier. Mm -hmm. uh, and... I read uh, read the other day um, on a, on Instagram. I don't remember who it was that wrote this, uh, but she was writing like when I started exploring uh, 
like sexuality with women and not only men, she felt left out in some like occasions because she was not lesbian and she was she considered herself being bisexual and then she was not good enough kind of that was my interpretation of it uh she felt like she was not good enough for the lesbians because and then i was like okay so if why do we always need to mm. put our cells in boxes yeah and and i know that that's part of how our brain works to be able to handle all the complex things that's going on but at the moment i can feel like a lot of the discussions around gender just continues to put everyone in boxes all the time mm. and i'm not sure but that also, that's it's helping. also the other way around it's also the opposite namely that um, it's considered politically correct uh, or it has been at least uh, until maybe recently to, to 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 say that we're all we're all the same yeah there, there are no differences at all and that's also a bit strange isn't it yeah <laughs> because <laughs> i, feel I mean like I'm sexuality is, like, yeah. is about you know the the tension that it is between the yeah sexes, like the, the, is, polarity is the polarity is really important when it comes to sexuality yeah, and it is a physical three-dimensional thing so i mean yeah and and i i i can kind of get angry when when people say there are no differences between men and women female and male because biologically there is a lot of differences and that's a beautiful thing mm. and by saying that there are no differences and still living in a male dominated society in many, many cases, what we are telling all the women is that, well, there are no differences. So you can be just like the men are, mm. but we can't. We also have mm. a cycle in it our bodies. It doesn't help women, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't help anyone mm. because what we are doing is by saying that everyone's the same, we, we're not using the best things from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a waste of potential. What has the the Me Too movement uh, done to you and and for society? You think? I would say it's been super important because that, like that topic, needs to be raised. And a lot of around what's been happening in Me Too, and a lot of like abuse from men on women that has been going on and that are still ongoing. It's horrible. And it's toxic and it's not the beautiful part of men. Mm. And what I do also feel sometimes with everything that's going on, and this is definitely not po politically correct to say, is that you can, can't almost say that you love men today because that's true, that, yeah. that has become a bad mm. thing to mm. say. Uh, because there are there are men who do horrible things. There are women who do horrible things. And many times, uh, I mean, men are stronger uh, when it comes to like the physical form and so on. So yes, of course, they have that advantage, mm. so to say, and that is going to affect more women. Mm. So yes, there are more men hurting women than the other way around. Um, but also forget the beautiful things that men bring us in today's society yeah. maybe a lot of women are scared of afraid of uh, like i say loving yeah. allowing allowing themselves to love men yes because they are scared that uh, well oh, because of what you're saying here. yeah and and i i still partly am scared yeah. to say that i do that and there is also this part to, to take it a little bit further where we as women have been taught to be independent and independence is great but the thing is we've taught we, we have been taught since we were kids to be so independent and to more or less never trust anyone that when we try to build a relationship we almost can't and i've been struggling a lot mm. with this and I still see myself coming back to that in my current relationship. And me and my partner now, we can talk about this. And he he can understand me or, or like understand where I'm coming from. And it's it's difficult when we're taught to be so independent and we don't need anyone. Mm. 
Mm. So then wh- why do we, why yeah. are we supposed to be in a relationship? And it's not about needing to be in the relationship either. It's about wanting, wanting because it, yeah. it makes you better. It has to do with better. love, doesn't it? It ha- makes the other, exactly. I mean, it makes you the, better. The it makes the other. The force of the universe. Yeah, it makes the other person better. And by also then acknowledging that we are different in those situations as well. That's a beautiful thing and so much can be created, but we are, we're so many times taught to be independent and to not trust anyone and to make sure that we have everything figured out for a potential divorce before we even start dating mm-hmm. someone. It's a bit cynical. It is. Mm. And I know there are a lot of women who have been hurt in divorces and so on. So I know it's, it's understandable. Important. It's, it's, under, yeah. it's understandable. Yeah. But it's also like we are preparing for divorce before we even fall in love. And we're kind of manifesting that divorce to happen. Yeah. And it works the same way as yeah. like when you manifest abundance, yeah. you manifest divorce and yeah, lack and exactly. everything. Yeah, we, we need to, I mean, as you say, it's understand, understandable that, totally. that this has come about, but it, we need to get out of that. In, yeah, in exactly. Some way. And, and it's everything that's happening and all these beliefs and conditioning that we have, it's understandable from where, where it's coming from. And we also need to dare to take the first step mm. sometimes. What I tend to hear among couples is that, well, if he just does that, then I will. Always making sure the other one does something mm. first before I yeah. do something instead of like, Okay, so I'm going to open up and show my feelings first, and then I can invite him to yeah. that. So I can take that step first. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very wisely said. So about money, then. I mean, you've said that um, you rather focus on how to make more money than how to cut costs. Yeah, because the former. Is about expansion, and yeah. the latter is about contraction. Exactly. Do you, do you think that one inadvertently contracts other parts of one's life when one focuses on on cutting costs only? Yeah. Also. Definitely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and that's why it's so much connected because then we're coming back to the lack mentality. That being said, it's also important to make sure. I also do talk about like really being grateful and loving the costs that you do choose to have and and make like a conscious choice. Uh, But that's such a small part because if we tend to focus just on like, so now I'm going to cut those costs, I'm going to do less of that, less of that, less of that. We are focusing on less, less, less. And that word we are repeating. So where the energy goes, like... Where yeah. our thoughts goes, the energy flows. And yeah. that means that we are going to contract other parts of our lives as well, including love and our sexuality and so on. But yes, we need to have, a f- like, we need to make conscious choices when it comes to our costs. And that's not always easy because we have been conditioned that you need all those things that you maybe don't actually need. Uh, but then when it comes to, expanding our incomes instead of like the money coming in there is no limit the only limit that we have is in our head mm. uh your money is not in your bank account it's in your head like <laughs> exactly. P- peter Koenig, uh, yeah the guy that i interviewed a couple of years ago yeah so so yeah it's it's so much more in our head and the thing is it also hurts sometimes to realize that and to think about that that like okay i'm not really where I want to be in my life. And the only one who can take responsibility for that is me. Mm. And then again, coming back to not blaming yourself for not doing this thing or not doing that or not coming to this place and so on, but like accepting and loving and showing compassion to the journey that you have been doing and showing compassion to where you are today to then be able to move forward. I think money is such a strange thing. I've been pondering that topic a lot myself. Yeah. Sexuality also, which is interesting that you combine the two. 
uh, I, I think money is is just energy, isn't it? Because yeah. it, it is nothing. I mean, especially now that we don't have the the, the gold standard, for instance. I no. mean, it doesn't represent anything. It's just figures. It's just yeah, numbers. It, now it's just numbers on, on screens. Uh, exactly. A while ago, so it was just like pieces of paper, yeah. and in some parts of the world, it's still, still a lot. But pieces like here of in paper. Sweden, we never use paper money all, no. almost. So it's it's just energy in a way, and yeah. so it's it's kind of. People still think it is a thing that is yeah. an entity of its own that it exists. It doesn't exist. It's no. a belief system. It's totally a belief system. A belief system that we have given so much power. Power, yeah. And and it's uh, like the lack. We, we were talking about the lack mentality. I think that lack is. I don't know if you agree with me, but I think that lack is. There is no lack on Earth, actually, really, because it's it's artificially created to lubricate the economic system. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I mean, you still, but you work with yeah. investments. No, but, so. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're lubricating the system. I totally am. And, but, yeah. and, and then some, some people may also talk about like, if you look at other parts of the world where, where, where my, where everyone is not as fortunate as we are in, in the Western world. And in some senses, uh, they are way, way poorer. And it's, the collective's fault, so to say, I would kind of want to say it, because our lack is affecting the whole world. Our sense of lack is affecting the whole world, not only ourselves. Mm. It is affecting ourselves, but it's mm. creating this lack mentality in the whole world, in the whole collective. Instead of understanding that we are abundant as human beings and mm. energy is abundant, money is abundant, and it's just, as you were saying, it's just energy flowing. Mm. And we have given it so much power. I don't think there's anything in the world that we have given as much power as we have to the money. Number two is perhaps sexuality. Yeah, sexuality then. probably. <laughs> so, and those are the two that you've chosen to, to, yeah. to coach about. Yeah. Great. Yeah, well, I think I, I tend to say sometimes, and people find it really woo-woo, uh, that, I mean... The only thing we do, the only things we do here on Earth, our eight billion people here, is yeah. to, to create, to 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 live, to love, to have fun, to mm. experience, to, I mean, to do things, yeah. services, products, and I mean, money is. Why should there be any money involved at all? I mean, we just do things. Yeah. And so I, I keep thinking, why can't we just do things? Yeah. Because that's what we want to do. But who's going to pay for? I mean, who's going to, you know. The transaction between what your service uh, is yeah. doing there and the products is doing there, and I know it's complicated. It's not going to change next week. But no. do, do you think that do you envisage a world where we might not even use money? And uh, oh, wow, <laughs> that's well, such that's a, a big, good uh, that's big such a big question. big yeah. and and good question uh, that I haven't really been thinking about in that mm. sense, but. But yeah, I think that would be amazing. We'll talk and about that next time. When yeah, you exactly. And <laughs> and I feel like, as you were mentioning, we are like we put so much power into the money, and what we do is just like essentially live and create and love. And the more we focus on the money, the less we live and create and love. Yeah, yeah. And we live and create and love for the money. Yeah. Instead of the other way around. Yeah. So, yeah. It's crazy. Ida Herbertson, where can people now go to find your work and your coaching? Uh, the best way to find me is on Instagram. So it's Ida Herbertson. Uh, and yeah, that's that's usually the easiest way. It's also idaherbertson.com if you want to check out my website. But uh, Instagram is where I'm fairly active and I'm just a DM away. Uh, and as you were mentioning, the weekly question that I've started, which is uh, kind of new, I've done one so far. <laughs> Uh, because I launched a new website um, recently. So that's like a chance for you to get potential advice, coaching just through text, and it will be shared as like, either yeah. a video or, or a longer blog yeah, post. Yeah, and I will put the links in the description box, of course. Super, as thank you. always. Ida, it's been a true joy talking with you today, and good luck with your much-needed and very courageous uh, bridging of different parts of life. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to have these conversations. So thank you so much for having me.
If you like this video and other interviews and talks on Mind the Shift, please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support. And you can follow Mind the Shift on Facebook and Instagram. And you can follow me, Anders Bolling, on all the main social media and also on medium.com. Thank you.